Aloha and welcome to the latest episode of Telehealth in Hawaii. My name is Vikram Acharya. I'm the host of Telehealth in Hawaii, also the Chief Executive Officer of Cloudwell Health, Hawaii's all digital physician founded telehealth organization. This is a very special month, important month in terms of healthcare and wellness. It's National Nutrition Month and also National Kidney Month. So to talk to us about the importance of these two events is Dr. Neil Chauhan. Dr. Chauhan, welcome to Telehealth in Hawaii. How are you today? Hi, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You have a very extensive background in telemedicine. Talk me through all your experiences and how you've gotten to this point, working as a physician and serving the sure. residents of the state of Hawaii. Sure, so, yeah, L long story. So um, my background is uh, family medicine um, and I did my training in England uh, where I kind of practiced for a good few years post-residency. Um, and then I did a stint in Canada for about a year and a half. Um, and my now wife, uh, we were doing long distance and we finally decided you know, now's the right time to be in Hawaii, which is where she, she was. And um, it was very serendipitous as I moved here, um, I was asked to get involved with a telehealth company at the time. And this was gosh, about seven years ago, so way before COVID. And, um, you know, I was very involved with this startup telehealth company, and uh, I'm still working with them, and we're the biggest telehealth company in Europe. Um, and it's just been a very interesting journey, you know, pre-COVID, during COVID, and just how the um, that this whole area of medicine has evolved. And um, it was kind of through that experience and then coming here to Hawaii, um, seeing the kind of healthcare challenges that we have, um, and seeing how telehealth could help the community. And that's, that's how we started up Cloudwell Health. Definitely, definitely. That's a great story. Now, you're a physician. You see many patients with diabetes, you know, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, now that it's National Nutrition Month, what are some steps that residents of the state of Hawaii can take to improve their health when it comes to their nutrition? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And it, it's something that, you know, us as a family have suddenly been thinking a lot of through this month as well. And, you know, we have a, a young two-year-old and, uh, you know, prior to having a kid, you know, you know, busy professionals and nutrition probably wasn't the most important thing on our, on our heads. And now having a kid and thinking about your health and kind of wanting to stay healthy as you get older and so on is, is definitely a, a kind of pretty significant kind of, uh, you know, priority. And so it's a great month for really people to be able to spend some time to think through how to improve their nutrition, their food intake, and how that can, the, the right building blocks uh, can help for the future. Um, and, you know, as a family, just to bring, bring it back to that, we've been kind of trying to think of ways that we can uh, work on improving our diet, how we can kind of try and reduce the amount of processed foods and fast foods we eat and so on. And it's just so easy, right? You know, if you're tired, if you're, um, you know, running around, you tend to grab the easiest, quickest thing you can, right? And if you're kitchen or fridge is full of not the healthiest of things or well, that's what you'll go for so we've kind of been trying to make this you know diligent effort to you know try and keep only healthy things in the fridge as snacks or keeping things like you know fruits and vegetables and um, making sure we're kind of drinking plenty of fluids a lot of the times uh, this is a bit of a revelation for me is sometimes you think you're hungry you're actually just thirsty you need to kind of drink some fluids mm. um and kind of making a concerted effort to get the right amounts of fruits and vegetables you know and i was looking there's some really amazing statistics out there something like 60 percent of our food intake is from outside in terms of you know restaurants or you know fast food takeaways processed foods and so on and so trying to make an effort to kind of have home cooked meals easier said than done right um, but I think it all comes down to planning um, so we've kind of been trying to do food planning for the week uh, trying to kind of figure out what meals we'll be having and then you know a step from there would be well, what are we actually going to be shopping for 
Whereas before that, it was kind of chaos. I'd, you know, go to the supermarket and grab what I can think of but that we need. Um, and God, God forbid you go in hungry, right? Then you pick all the terrible stuff. Um, so for us, it's definitely made a difference through the month already in terms of having that kind of schedule, carving out time to actually do the kind of prep and meal planning. And it's actually been really nice. I mean, you know, for us, for my wife and I, it kind of gives us some time, some downtime almost just to be able to talk through things and some time in the kitchen together. Um, so it's been enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing uh, which we're trying to set up is uh kind of exploring more culture for different foods. And so, you know, we have an extensive network of kind of friends and so on here locally, you know, people from different backgrounds, different countries. And so we're setting up a supper club where we try and be as healthy as possible. And once a month we meet up and everyone brings a dish and, uh, you know, just a way to to get to enjoy different things that you might not have had before, but kind of ensuring that it's, it's more on the healthy side. Yeah. You know, what, what's interesting about Cloudwell is that not only could I get access to a Hawaii board certified physician in less than an hour, but there's also something called a telephysical. And you have a lot of experience in telemedicine. You know, how does the telephysical connect back to nutrition? You know, if I were to have a telephysical, how does that work? Yeah, so, so the telephysical is, is something that we launch as part of our primary care model. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we do urgent care telehealth and, and we recently launched uh, primary care uh, where you're looking at a, a patient's kind of journey. You're looking at preventative health, trying to keep people as well as possible and kind of prevent diseases from kind of you know, moving forward or progressing. And the telephysical, and this is something that I, kind of, I spearheaded in our kind of UK platform, is a way of almost getting a, a snapshot of a patient's kind of well-being at that time. So it's looking at a holistic approach to the patient. We call it biopsychosocial. So, you know, from a um, medical standpoint, from a psychological, you know, mental health standpoint, and just what else is going on in life, and what, what things can we think through to help? And so nutrition is a big part of that, kind of knowing, you know, how, how much, you know, how much are we exercising? How much are we kind of, what are we eating? How much are we eating outside, um, you know, weight, uh, body mass index, things like that can really, you know, small adjustments can make a really big impact, especially as we kind of get older. And so part of that, which I'm really proud of, is our clinical coordinators who help kind of get patients booked in and so on. We, we actually kind of train them all to be health coaches. Mm -hmm. And so a big part of that was nutrition and healthy diet. So, you know, one, they have an understanding about it and they're able to help kind of talk patients through that, you know, prior to uh, the patient speaking with a physician um, and kind of ongoing care, they're able to kind of help with their input and advice there. So I can see a physician and then also get ongoing coaching with one of the coordinators who's certified to help me improve my nutrition. Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're able to kind of give, it, give advice and that, that telephysical is there to help us moving forward. So you know, if it looks like it's appropriate, there'll be kind of blood tests that are arranged, things like checking cholesterol, uh, your kidney function. And then after that, we can kind of create a plan to kind of get you to your fittest, to your healthiest. Now, there's a big subject right now that due to the unfortunate effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people kind of put off care. Um, they didn't see a doctor for at least two years, sometimes even more. Um, are you finding when you're seeing patients right now that many are coming in with unexpectedly high blood pressures, cholesterol, some things that maybe weren't looked at um, over the past couple of years and now all of a sudden it's become an issue? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's, it's significant, both, both here in the U.S. And, and with my work I do in the U.K. It's true, you know, people, um, you know, haven't necessarily accessed care as regularly as they would have done kind of pre-COVID. And I think it's also been challenging for patients to get in to see someone. So mm -hmm. in terms of things like routine blood tests, checking blood pressures and so on, you know, those things may not have happened as frequently. And then there's also, you know, if patients were noticing a niggle or something, I think a lot of people put it off during the pandemic. And so, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, those things can progress. 
Um, and we do see that. So when we're kind of seeing patients and doing telephysicals and checking things, sometimes we're noticing um, you know, issues that you know you can still manage and it's great that we're kind of picking them up, but you know, I think in another time may have been picked up earlier. Now um, if um if I see you and you're concerned based off what I tell you that my diet is not very good. You know, I eat a lot of fried foods, a lot of a lot of uh, sweet dishes, um, and you want me to get my labs done. How does that work in a telemedicine model? What would the coordinator walk me through on the phone? Yeah, so I mean, we try and keep things as kind of simple and easy as possible. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it's if it's like that, you know, certain blood tests would be appropriate to check, like the sugars and kidney function and so on. Then you know, those are arranged by the clinician, the physician, and then the coordinator helps uh, figure out with the patient where the closest lab is to get that done. Um, and then once we have the results, uh, the, con- the patient's contacted, invited back for a follow up to kind of go through that. Um, so you know the key is keeping these things easy you know sometimes there can be so many unnecessary steps or travel and kind of time sucks that you want to try and get rid of those so that you know one patients are more able and willing to do these things um, but just try to make it easy everyone's busy you know everyone could mm-hmm. do with some convenience with these things so we know it's easy to see a doctor you know with just a couple clicks now people always ask is it the same as an in-person visit, you know, and it really is. And walk us through how it's the same. Yeah, I mean, it's been around long enough now that we've seen that. So I think, you know, about 80% of what, you know, a PCP would manage in, in practice in a physical location can be managed with telehealth, which is the vast, vast majority of things. And, and I think that's growing with the technology that we're having and then access to specialists and referrals and so on. Um, I think it's really kind of becoming a significant kind of part of general practice. Um, in terms of kind of how we manage that, so, you know, there's intake in terms of patients booking in for an appointment, it's collecting some information to kind of see if it is safe, right? You know, if someone clearly has some very urgent pressing issue, you know, that they need to go straight to the emergency room for, well, that's flagged, that's, that's picked up immediately, mm-hmm. um, patients contacted, and they're kind of um, directed and helped to kind of get to the appropriate service. Um, if all looks appropriate, then you know, it's, it's a matter of minutes in terms of scheduling an appointment, speaking to the clinician. And then there's a huge amount that they're able to do by video consultations in terms of examining and assessing patients, um, doing, being able to see you know, past medical history, previous prescriptions. Um, you, know, you have the ability to upload images. So if there's things like rashes that need to be seen. Um, and on the other end, you know, if investigations are needed, we're able to arrange all that. So things like imaging and blood tests, um, as well as referrals. And we're very fortunate here. So we have an extensive network of specialists. And so we're able to fast track getting people seen by the appropriate specialist um, and what's nice is uh, with the technology and the telehealth side, it's a very seamless process. It's as mm. much shorter waiting time. It's very easy for us to speak to the specialist so that they know exactly what the issue is and all the relevant information can be sent across. Now, if I uh, do a telephysical, I get my labs done and I see you again and you think I need to see a a kidney doctor, a nephrologist, how would that work then so I can get to the nephrologist as soon as possible? Yeah, so so we have nephrologists, a kidney specialist kind of within our network. Um, And so whether you have insurance or not, you know, we'd be able to kind of refer patients. But the step back would be, you know, we would review the results. We would invite you back for that follow up go through, uh, you know, what the results are, if there's something that needs further looking into, um, and then a referral is made to the appropriate specialist and our coordinators help kind of fast track that so that there's very little that the patient needs to do. Um, you know, we, we would kind of figure out when the next available slot is, we'd contact the patient, let them know, you know, is that convenient for them, and then make sure that they have all the appropriate information. And then usually the specialist clinic would contact the patient too, just so that they kind of know exactly where and when to be there. I mean, that seamless access is really great. I mean, oftentimes 
when somebody goes to their primary care doctor and they need to see a nephrologist or a heart doctor, for example, a cardiologist, they're often given a card or a phone number and you, and you call that number, it can take months to be seen, but it sounds like with this process, much quicker. And, and I think that's that's the key, you know, it, it's easy for, I've been there, you know, where you have all the intentions of calling the number and booking something in, but other things get in the way and you get busy and sometimes you put that off. Um, and this is just a great way of getting things done in that moment. It's all done so so quickly and seamlessly uh, that the chance of fall off or delay and so on is reduced, which is what we want. You know, mm -hmm. we just don't want issues to potentially fester or get worse. You know, if you've got um, you know something that needs additional help or specialist review obviously the sooner that's taken care of the better for everyone it seems like everything is interconnected you know the the better i eat the better my potentially my blood pressure the better my uh, cholesterol levels which then re, re, uh, results in better kidney function is that kind of how it's all interconnected from your standpoint yeah i mean it, yeah, it's it's all it's all kind of connected. I mean, nutrition is such an important part of our well-being, um, and I always go back to preventative health. So, you know, having these building blocks of a healthy diet, a healthy lifestyle, is such a significant part of kind of being able to keep your body healthy. Um, and on the other side, you know, being able to access quick care when there are issues and getting to the appropriate place is so important too uh, to prevent things from worsening. Yeah. Yeah. They refer to kidney disease as, as a unfortunately a, a quote unquote silent killer. Um, what do what do they mean by that? And what steps can be taken to try and make sure I have some healthy kidneys? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great question. And you're right. You know, um, it's classed as a bit of a silent disease. You know, a lot of the times. Um, people won't know that they have issues with their kidneys because it doesn't come up with obvious signs or symptoms until much later in what we call disease progression. Um, you know, and it's, it is really common. You know, kidney disease, I think, is the ninth most common cause of death in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and it, more than 35 million people suffer with what we call chronic kidney disease. Um, and because it's silent in its early stages, um, you know, it can be difficult to identify unless people are having kind of regular checkups and we're checking their blood pressure and their renal kidney function mm -hmm. and trying to identify those patients that might be at risk. And I think you mentioned, you know, those that are high at risk are those that have you know, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. As you get older, there's a high incidence of kidney disease as well. Um, in the later stages of things like chronic kidney disease, you can see symptoms of things like swollen ankles, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, your urine can change in terms of appearance and so on. Um, but they're still not the most obvious of symptoms. And so a lot of it comes down to good preventative care, making sure you're having your annual checks and so on. Um, in terms of you know preventative measures, uh, you know that, that's obviously the most important here. And so you know, maintaining good general health, having a well-balanced diet, avoiding high sodium, so salt intake, you know, making sure you're having lots of fruits and vegetables, exercising regularly, keeping an eye on your blood pressure. Uh, you know, there's, uh, uh, there's a clear link between blood pressure and, and kidneys. And so, um, you know, now it's pretty easy for people to have a blood pressure monitor. I know a lot of people have those check, are checking their blood pressure periodically, which is great. I mean, I think doing those sorts of things uh, can help identify things if they do crop up. Uh, the blood pressure that uh, people can use, that's something that's used a lot in, in the telemedicine world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, and I think people have got used to um, you know, doing some of these things as part yeah. of you know, telehealth and through the pandemic, um, you know, checking your blood pressure. Uh, so a lot of people bought oxygen monitors right through the mm -hmm. pandemic where you put it on your finger. Um, you know, those things have been really helpful. And I think there's no reason that patients can't check those things. And, you know, sometimes patients might not be confident they've never used it before, but that's the beauty of video consultations where you can literally kind of talk it through with someone and have a doctor watching and checking. Um, yeah, yeah we, we, we use that a lot and we found that really helpful. Yeah. You know, I've always heard these stories from, from patients, you know, 
my primary care doctor tells me one thing and it's in one medical record. My specialist tells me something else and it's in a different medical record. Is there integration with medical records with telemedicine in a way that it results in better communication and better care so that things are not disjointed for the patient and that everybody's on the same page? Yeah, and, and, and that's just such a critical component, right? If, yeah. if there's information which is in different places and uh, you know the PCP doesn't know what the specialist has said, that, that's where things can go wrong, right? Uh, or it can delay pot potential treatments and so forth. So telehealth has definitely helped with that. You know, it's, all, it's all encompassed in terms of telehealth, ability to share records, electronic medical record systems. And, you know, it sounds so simple, but it, it, you know, it's not always there in terms of you should be able to, as a clinician, write some notes and it should be visible for the next physician or the specialist and the patient should be able to see them. And, you know, that, that's where you know, telehealth and cloud well, clearly does do that in terms of that seamless transition of information to those that need it. Um, and what I love is the whole front facing uh, record so patients can see, right? Um, you know, with my practice in England, front facing records has been pretty much always there since the advent of our kind of telehealth services several years ago. Um, and it does change your mindset in terms of, you know, writing things in a way that's easier for patients to understand. And I think it really helps patients to be able to see the, you know, see the doctor's thoughts, what the plan is, and actually have it. It's tangible. You can read it, you can review it, and you kind of know what's going on. You know, it's, it's, it's great to have something like a telemedicine service especially in Hawaii, because especially, you know, throughout the state, there's a massive physician shortage, and this can get you access to a doctor the same day and address things like potential kidney disease, how to eat better, how to live better, you know, in terms of health and wellness. You know, people may live far away from a doctor, but they do have access to a smartphone and they can get the care they need when they need it and in a timely way for their overall wellness. Yep, and, and that's the key. I mean, that, that's why we wanted to start this in terms of, you know, there's definitely kind of geographic challenges here in Hawaii. Um, there is a shortage of physicians. You know, there's going to be a huge number of physicians that retire as well. And you want to make sure that people have the best and easiest access to good quality care. Um, and so I think telehealth really does help answer that. And you're right. I think just being able to use your smartphone or get on your laptop and be able to speak to a, a physician um, gets rid of a lot of those hurdles. And, and I think it's that access to expertise and information um, that's kind of critical. I'm sure you have patients um, when you counsel them on things like, you know, kidney disease, nutrition, that they may be a little bit hesitant to use telemedicine. Maybe it's their first time, but when they use it, they really like it, right? And they're like, you know, I, I didn't think it was this easy. I'll be back. You get a lot of that or you get more of that? Well, you know, I'm not so sure about this. Yeah, probably a mixture. I mean, you have some people, you know, who just aren't comfortable with the technology. I haven't used it before, but you're right in that once people have used it, they're then very comfortable with it. And I think um, I might be slightly off, but I think we have like an 80%, 90% retention rate. So if patients have used it once, they'll definitely be using it again. Um, and, and I think, you know, if you were to just leave it to kind of patients to figure out from that tech standpoint, if it's something that they're not used to, you know, there's clearly challenges there if you're just not comfortable with it. But I think when you have coordinators that can help walk a patient through it, explain it, hold the hand through the kind of process and for it to already be easy and simple, um, I think then, then it's uh, less of a challenge. So that's, that's unique. So you have a coordinator team that actually reaches out to the patient before the appointment to tell them what to expect. Because I know a lot, of, a lot of companies actually don't do that, um, at least that more personal connection. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what we do. And, and that's just something that we always felt was important, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's not about, um, you know, getting as many patients as you can through the door or kind of letting the automated services kind of take over. For us, it's still about being able to, you know, provide the best quality care. And I remember when we were first starting with this, it was about how can we provide the, the best bedside manner, 
right? And we talk about bedside manner in terms of that kind of connection you can have with the doctor and how can we do that virtually? And, and this is what we realize, you know, you, you have to have those human contact points. You need to have someone that can help um, with the simple pieces and kind of, you know, having a contact point with the patient before they're booked or during the booking process and making sure that everything is set up and if they have any questions. I, I think that's just a really important part. It's funny, again, it just goes back to how everything's interconnected. Telemedicine provides a service that helps people get access to timely medical care. The better the customer service, the more people are going to use it, the more people are going to use it. It just increases uh, better health, better wellness, and basically a healthier society, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. It's about you know, providing that easy access to care. So when patients need it, they get it. And in by doing that, you can avoid what we call sequelae or progression of mm-hmm. disease. Mm-hmm. And the aim, you know, the, the big aim is to try and get, keep everyone healthy, you know, prevent people from having to you know, go into hospital or kind of unexpected illness progression or sudden things like that. And I think if you have easy access and you're able to kind of speak with a doctor, you're able to keep on top of telephysicals and your blood tests and so on, you have a much higher chance of identifying any issues as early as possible. I think, I think that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. And being able to identify things quickly with easy access just seems like a great differentiator. Thank yeah. you so much. You know, Dr. Chauhan, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. You know, your experience in telemedicine, the excellent progress that Cloudwell is making in terms of providing just great care, you know, to the residents of the state. It's just making a significant difference. And I just really appreciate your time. Thank you for being on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Take care. Mahalo. (laughs) Have a wonderful day. And you. Bye then. Take care. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.